Today I'm going to share my top 10 list of local no-gi grapplers that I find the most exciting to watch right now. Hey everybody, my name is Paul Federici. I'm a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt under PJ O'Sullivan. I train out of Pura Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Academy in Hamilton, Ontario, as well as Parabellum MMA in Oakville, Ontario. And today I'm here to answer some of your questions. If this is the first time you've been to this channel, please take a second to click the subscribe button below. And if you're already a subscriber, please take a second to click that little bell icon next to it and turn your notifications on so you'll get a message every time I release a new video. Okay, so I have a question here from Grappling Canada Variety Channel uh, who reached out to me on Instagram and they ask, who are some of the up and coming Canadian BJJ competitors you like to watch? This is an awesome question. Thanks so much for reaching out to me. Um, this is tough <laughs> as somebody that's notoriously indecisive and gets overwhelmed easily with a lot of choice. Uh, I figured the best way to actually do this would be to break it into two parts. So I'm going to focus this first video on the top 10 no-gi people uh, that uh, I find exciting to watch that are local. Okay, so Canada's massive. There's just an overwhelming amount of talent in Ontario alone, let alone the country. And so I thought what I would do is focus on people that I've at least either trained and or rolled with or had a chance to see compete live uh, a few times. That way I could maybe give a bit more insight into these people than just sort of, you know, somebody general that I've never met. Um, so it's listed one to 10. It is not a meant to be an exhaustive list. I will inevitably leave somebody off and it is not ranked in any particular order, okay? So one to 10 is just arbitrary. So uh, please don't yell at me if you feel you should have been one when you were 10. Okay, so <laughs> the first person that just immediately popped to my mind when I, um, when I started creating this list is somebody that I train with. Shocking, I know. Uh, this is a young guy named Vinny Diaz who trains out of Parabellum MMA. Uh, and I've trained with Vinny probably for the last three years. So the, the two things you need to know right off the hop with Vinny is that his last name is Diaz and that he is Brazilian to some degree. So already two major pluses in the category for him in terms of becoming a great grappler. Uh, I don't even honestly know how old he is right now. I think he's 19 or 20, but he could be 40. I have no idea. You know how Brazilians are with their age. Uh, but. He's currently a purple belt under Rory McDonald. As I've gotten to know him and rolled with him and seen him train and compete, I, he's honestly one of the most talented people I've ever come across in the sport. And I've been doing this for about 14 years. Um, you know, he is incredibly technical and he just seems to get better very, very quickly. Um, he's had some great performances. Uh, he got a great rear naked choke win. Uh, at the very first Parabellum, uh, Parabellum MMA Quintet, which is a submission-only uh, card that Rory McDonald has been putting on locally. Um, and what I like about Vinny is he's a submission machine. Like, he's always hunting for the finish, which is kind of a hallmark of a lot of uh, grapplers under Rory McDonald. But um, just an incredibly skilled... Uh, you know, grappler that is able to attack from head to toe. You know, he's he's great with leg locks. He's great at taking the back. He's great at choking. He's great at top control. And his passing is starting to become a lot to deal with as well. He started to implement kind of this more modern Gordon Ryan style and uh, it's it's a lot to deal with. So Vinny is a name that if you see him in the future when Jiu Jitsu is legal again that you, you keep an eye for him in performances and at Parabellum Quintets moving forward. Number two on the list is Ergus Segeta. I think I'm pronouncing his last name right, but I apologize if I'm butchering it. This is actually not a guy that I've ever rolled with, but I've seen him compete a lot and he's really impressive. Uh, he is currently a purple belt. I think he's under Nova Unyao, but I have no idea. I know him mostly through uh, the Burlington Training Center crew. He trains regularly with Paul Jalbert and Adam Asenza. Uh, Ergus has taken, uh, you know, his skills to the uh, MMA realm. He's 4-0 as a professional mixed martial artist. Um, but what really caught my eye was in 2019 at the Ontario Open Nogi, this kid ran the table from 
<laughs> from local to international, okay? So what do I mean by that? He won his division, his purple belt division. So he won, he was undefeated there. Then he went on to win the open division and was undefeated there and won a free trip to the Nogi Worlds this past year in California in December. So I got to see him at the Ontario Open and phenomenal performances. And then it was interesting because I competed in California in December as well this past year. And I got to see him uh, compete in uh, against the best guys in the world at the men's level at Purple Belt. And he won gold there. And so I have yet to see this guy lose. Um, unbelievable. His top pressure and his wrestling and just the pace he sets is tenacious. He just breaks guys. What I thought was really interesting was watching him... Uh, at the Worlds in California. And once people would lock up with them, they kind of had this like, oh shit look on their face, as you probably should. Um, but what was interesting is that a lot of these guys would start to, they knew his wrestling was good and they were intimidated. And so they would start to like backpedal around the outskirts of the ring because they knew then if he got a takedown and they went out of bounds, it wouldn't count. So pretty remarkable to see a guy instill that kind of intimidation and fear in world-class purple belt grapplers uh, right off the hop. He, he is a world champion at purple belt in the no, in no gi, and he's still a purple belt. So somebody, for the love of God, please, please promote this man. He should at least be a brown belt right now. Uh, I don't care if you have to do it over Zoom. I don't care if you mail it to him. Just whoever is... Uh, you know, the uh, head instructor of this guy, please give him a bump. He's He deserves it, okay? What I like about him, though, too, is that he's incredibly versatile, okay? So he, you know, competed under the points sort of scenario in the Ontario Open and at the uh, Nogi Worlds, but I've also seen him compete at Parabellum Quintet where he got a great arm triangle finish in Parabellum Quintet 2, I believe. So this is a guy that can break you down on the feet, wrestle, pass your guard, dominate on top, play off his back, he can submit you, he can outpoint you, and I have no doubt that if you were to fight him in a cage, it would be nothing but a nightmare. Keep an eye on this guy in the future. I think whether it's jujitsu or MMA, there's big things to come for this guy. All right, number three on my list is another young guy that I have some experience training with uh, named Brandon Hare. Uh, he is a purple belt under Dan Hale out of Academics uh, BJJ in Burlington. And I first had an opportunity to train with him because he started to show up quite a bit at Parabellum MMA. He was getting ready for a, a, a Nogi Quintet match. Um, and I was really impressed right away. Uh, this is another guy that started very young. And I'm telling you, when these kids start to hit their stride when they're a bit older, Man, there is, some of the skills are unbelievable. So he's another kid that I think is a really young, hungry, intense competitor. Um, what, I, what I was really impressed with is that I think he came to Parabellum uh, because he was interested in learning more about leg locks. And so this is kind of a young competitor that struck me as someone that's not, uh, what's the word? He's fearless, I think. He, was, he came to a different environment because he wanted to learn more about an area that I think he was weaker in. And he would just dive right in. I mean, we, him and I would exchange and have these crazy leg lock battles. And he was never, you know, he never turned down a roll. He's always ready to go. He brings an incredible pace. And to me, he just strikes me as a very natural competitor. Um, you know, he always likes to go for broke, but it's always in, in an intelligent, technical sort of way. Like, he's going to leave everything he's got on the mat. Uh, he won, I think, fight of the night at the the second Parabellum Quintet, which is no surprise, taking on an, an older and more experienced grappler, I think. Um, and I wasn't surprised by his performance one bit. Uh, everything that I saw in the gym led me to believe that he was just going to be amazing. Uh, this is a kid, too, that has a lot of experience uh, locally and internationally in competition. And uh, no matter what he decides to do, I have no doubt his future is very bright, whether it's gi or no gi. Um, t make sure you keep an eye out for this guy's name whenever he's on a card because you're not going to want to miss the match. Number four on my list is a girl that trains out of the Submission Academy in London, Ontario under Steve Poulin. Uh, her name is Mandy Adamak or Adamash. I don't know. I probably should learn how to say these people's names before I uh, make a YouTube video about them. But... Uh, Mandy is another sort of intense, ferocious competitor. She is a currently a blue belt 
I've seen Mandy compete on a few different occasions, never had a chance to train with her, but she just gets the crowd going. Another person that just leaves it all out there on the mat, uh, always hunting for the kill, always brings the pace, uh, very gritty, win or lose. Um, it's just somebody that I think is really exciting to watch. I think she has a great future ahead of her. And another person that strikes me as a natural competitor and someone that's fearless. She, I get the sense that she's the kind of girl that'll just take on whoever they offer her. Um, and what I think is really impressive is that, you know, she, she doesn't seem to shy away from the big stage and the lights. Um, cause I'll tell you, there's a lot of people that are monsters in the training room and when they get under the big lights, they wilt. And she strikes me as the kind of person that just comes to life under those situ uh, under that circumstance. So, uh, a super fun, uh, grappler, uh, doing great things for the women's scene in jujitsu and, uh, Someone that you should also keep an eye out for uh, on upcoming cards. All right, number five is Scott Jutris, a black belt under Kyo Terra. He is one of the head instructors at Niagara BJJ. Again, I've never had a chance to roll with Scott. I don't know him well. I've, I think I've met him a couple times, but um, I've not heard anything but phenomenal uh, compliments about him from people that train with him. Um, and another guy that is incredibly versatile on the mat. So Scott, my understanding is that he got up to brown belt uh, under uh, the 10th planet system in Montreal. Um, and then he, he sort of came back to Niagara to sort of plant some roots, became a Kyoterra black belt. Now he kind of flies under the banner of uh, Cicero Costa and, uh, and Gringo Jiu Jitsu. But some of the most impressive no-gi guard work in terms of attacks and submissions that I've seen, he's uh, a regular in tournaments, he's a regular in the submission-only scene, and what's really cool for a local guy is he started to really make a name for himself on these massive stages. Uh, he's competed against the likes of Dante Leon, and uh, he just was in Portland before the pandemic uh, on Chael Sonnen's Submission Underground card. Uh, so you can you can find that on, on UFC Fight Pass, but uh, Scott's doing big things, an exciting submission-oriented grappler, really cool under pressure, uh, a real super high-level legit black belt, and uh, he's someone that when I see his name on the card, I, I definitely don't want to miss that match. All right, number six is a biased pick. This is someone that I train with at uh, Pura Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, uh, Judo Greg Young. Uh, one of my primary training partners, I absolutely love this guy. He's currently a brown belt, although in my opinion, he should be a black belt and uh, has the black belt skill set and has for a long time. Uh, Judo's a relatively young guy in his 20s, just started to really get into the no-gi scene in terms of competition, was on the last uh, Parabellum Quintet card. And Greg is, is unbelievable. He's a black belt in Judo. Uh, that's what we call him, Judo Greg. One of the most versatile, intelligent, uh, varied grapplers I've ever trained with. A great mind for the sport, a great mind for the game, incredibly technical, a virtual uh, encyclopedia of knowledge. And uh, Greg's got a great, uh, always an open mind. He's a great athlete. Um, and he's just somebody that always brings the fireworks and someone that uh, I've learned a ton from. He's kind of one of the reasons I got really into the leg lock game because even though he would uh, whoop my ass on the mats, he'd always show me what he was doing and how to improve. And uh, I'm excited for him in the future. I think that if he continues to train hard in Nogi that he'll no doubt in my mind make a name for himself on the submission only scene. But again, a guy that's looking to go out there for the kill. He's not looking to uh, outpoint you or stall you out. Um, and uh, definitely a name you should keep uh, an eye out for in the future. All right, number seven on my list is Mike Romano, who is currently a brown belt under Marco Costa, under body of four. And uh, Mike is a guy that, as far as I'm aware, has been terrorizing the Nogi men's advance scene for a very long time. Uh, a very cool, collected, calm competitor, uh, submission-oriented, seems to always get the finish. I've seen him compete against teammates. I've seen some of his matches online. I've seen him compete live at Parabellum Quintet. Um, another guy with a real varied skill set, I believe that... He started under the 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu banner in Montreal, uh, again, similar to uh, Scott Jutris, um, but a guy that just doesn't seem phased by the lights, always comes to uh, finish his opponent, 
um, and a guy that you know has tons of experience and at and only as a brown belt right now. I, I'm excited to see how far this guy goes with his uh, competition career. Um, seems to have uh, more of a, a passion to compete no gi, and uh, a guy that every time I see his name on on the list, I'm I'm always excited to watch. Number eight is Luke Roberts, a purple belt uh, under the Body of Four affiliation. I believe that Luke wrestled for Brock University, and uh, man, this guy's just a tenacious competitor. He is the kind of guy that just wants to get in your face. Uh, He wants to put you on your butt and submit you. Um, I remember watching one of his matches at uh, Quintet, and I mean, he would just sort of bulldog, you know, head to the chest, double leg you to the mat. Uh, with no regard for your well-being and uh, super exciting to watch. I love that mentality. Uh, He's not out there to have, you know, a great time. He's out there to win and he's out there to put it on you. And I remember him getting a bit frustrated with his opponent who just, uh, this is at Parabellum Quintet, and uh, his opponent was just sort of turtling up, not really looking to engage, even though it was a submission-only match. And even though Luke was dominating, you could tell he wanted the kill, you know. And there's a lot of guys that are content to take it to overtime or win a judge's decision. Uh, Not Luke. Uh, He seems like a very hard-nosed competitor, someone that uh, I haven't rolled with, but I've heard nothing but great things about. And somebody that uh, no doubt will make a name for himself in the uh, submission-only, no-gi scene, in tournaments, whatever he chooses. I believe he's also training with the Niagara Top Team guys, Chris Prickett. Matt DeMarc Antonio. Uh, I think he's headed towards the MMA route, but whatever he decides to do, you can be sure he's going to bring a, a great pace, great intensity, and that strong desire to finish, which for me makes his matches really exciting. All right, number nine is another guy that I train with regularly. His name is Tom Mickelvenny. I think I'm saying his last name right. <laughs> I don't know. I just always call him Tom. Uh, But he is currently a purple belt under Rory McDonald at Parabellum MMA. And probably my one of my most trusted and greatest training partners. This guy has unquestionably made me better. Tom is a hard-nosed, submission-oriented grappler with a ton of upside and potential and skill and talent. Um, Tom is a very, very dangerous guy off his back. His triangle game is unbelievable. He probably has the best triangle of anybody I've rolled with. He can hit it from everywhere. He's got a ton of different uh, adjustments, setups, squeezes, angles. Uh, He kind of has, you know, a Ryan Hall sort of approach to uh, jiu-jitsu. Very analytical, very technical, uh, always thinking about the best way to finish the squeeze. He's not just throwing a triangle on and hoping for the best like he is precise he cuts all the fat out of the technique and uh, this is a guy that is a hard-nosed competitor hates to lose uh, but is always improving has an incredible guard uh, great inversion attacks great leg locks Tom had a a, a big win at the last Parabellum Quintet the third one uh, it was good to see him get on track after a couple of losses but uh, win or lose Tom's the guy that's going to bring the action And uh, I'm telling you, this guy is a monster in the training room, and I'm excited to see him continue to compete. Uh, That is, if we are ever allowed to again. (laughs) And uh, yeah, so Tom Mickelvenny, uh, someone that you should look out for in the future. I hope he continues to compete, and you will not be disappointed by his matches. All right, so that brings us to number 10. Uh, This is a local guy that's left us for sunny California, but his name is Mike Malott. Um, He is best known now as being one of the head coaches for Team Alpha Male, Uh, Uriah Faber and the guys there. He's kind of taken on the coaching role there, but his jiu-jitsu is unbelievable. Mike's a brown belt right now, easily has black belt level skills. I've seen him compete and fight to win. He recently had a great submission win uh, at the last Parabellum Quintet. Phenomenal leg locks, unbelievable wrestling, can win off his back, can take you down, can win on top. Mike is a submission machine. He's a great athlete. He's a young guy. Um, Fireworks every time he goes. 
and undoubtedly one of the most exciting guys uh, that seems to be able to adapt to a variety of different rule sets, which is not always that common, and in the sense of attacking. So he's finishing guys no matter what the rule set is, and something I really respect, someone that uh, I think you should keep an eye on in the future as well. All right, guys, so that is my top 10 list. Again, it is not in any particular order. It is not ranked. This is not meant to be an exhaustive list. These are just some of the people that I've at least had experience with watching live and or trained and rolled with um, that I think if you see them on a bill somewhere, you're definitely going to want to tune in. Um, I will make another video soon, hopefully breaking down uh, a gi version of this. Um, but for now, I hope you got a lot out of this video or at least learned some new names that maybe you weren't as familiar with. Um, if you like the video, please hit subscribe, please like, leave a comment below, let me know who some of your favorite no-gi grapplers are, leave me suggestions for gi people that I should be following. Um, if you have any questions for future videos that you want me to address, leave them below, or you can find me on Instagram, I'm at pfedmusic, you can DM me there, I'm on Facebook. Uh, I'm all over the damn place, so find me there. I hope you got something out of this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.